Oh man, I go weak in the knees for an egg like this. Ramen, millions of these piping hot, umami-laden bowls of noodles, meats, and veggies are eaten a day. Tokyo restaurant Suda made headlines by becoming the very first ramen restaurant in the world to receive the coveted Michelin star. And now their award-winning ramen is available in downtown San Francisco. When they first opened, they only served 300 bowls a day. So let's find out why this soba is so popular. Now, even though this location is a franchise and doesn't have a Michelin star itself, word spread and with plenty of fans eager to line up, their first North American expansion has been a hit, even among locals who've had the real thing. So we had to ask, what is it about this ramen that makes it so special? So when I first um, took a sip of the truffle ramen, I thought that the broth was really delicious. It was the same complexity as the one that we had in Japan. You know, the egg was cooked perfectly. The noodles were really good. I would say that Suda in San Francisco is just as good, especially if we're comparing the truffle ramen. What's the difference between ramen and soba? So soba is a, a term that's used interchangeably in the context of ramen. We want to keep uh, the flavors of Japan, kind of bring that over, and we want to bring uh, as much authenticity as we can using Japanese ingredients. Say something like 60 to 70% of our, our ingredients are imported from Japan. So everything on your menu here really is inspired or the same recipe as what is served in Japan that got the Michelin star. Tsuki Japan is kind of like the R&D bed. It's his main dish that he was awarded for, is the shoyu soba. It's got uh, truffles in it. That first slurp is just the truffliness, the umaminess of the, of the soup. I think it was a perfect replication of, of Suda Japan. I live in Japan more than 50 years. I have had uh, best soba uh, in the United States here. Here's how they make their famous Ajitama shoyu ramen. So we start with a hot bowl, very hot bowl. So this is uh, chicken oil, and we skim this from when we make chicken stock. This adds the fat to the dish, the oils that go on the top, and then when you pull the ramen up, it coats every strand. And it gets a little better mouthfeel. It's not sticky. It just slippery kind of thing. This is the main salt component of, of the ramen. We call it tare. It is brewed for two years, uh, barrel, barrel aged. And from here, we can start doing our noodles. Yeah, this is an infrared thermometer. It's an infrared thermometer to check our temperatures. Gosh, so precise. We heat it up for order. So our noodles are made by us off site. We drop it in, we start the timer. So when we pour, we pour this direction and we kind of show it off. We shake the residual water off. If there's too much water on the noodles, it's gonna dilute the soup. To kind of get coat that chicken oil that we have on top onto each strand, this is our hosaki menma, this bamboo. It's just the very tips of the shoots, so they're very tender. Some green onions, and then this is our truffle sauce. Each bowl is finished off with the sauce. Drop an egg in there. Time to eat. It is. Onigashimasu. Let's give a shot. There's a lightness to the broth that's really refreshing. The fat here really comes in the truffle and you can really taste it. The broth has a really earthy, maybe a smoky flavor. Yeah! Aside from their tasty shoyu broth, Suda also has a popular miso option. We run out of this very often. This is called mame miso. So this is different than the miso you would typically find in other restaurants and in just generally in the United States because uh, miso you typically find in the stores is mixed with uh, either wheat or rice or something else. Maybe our second best seller. Can I smell this? Yeah. Oh, that's funky. Uh, Crystal, how about you try this one? Yeah, baby. And then we'll make sure that the soup is nice and hot. Chop it on top and fluff it out so they're not sticking together. And then you want to give it a stir as soon as it drops. Okay. Once this breaks down, all the vegetables, all the seaweed, all that stuff breaks down into the broth and it's actually like part of it pureed into it. It smells richer, it's creamier. This broth is outstanding. I really think I could just have the broth with some rice and be really, really happy. And the chashu. I love how they slice this really thinly. It reminds me of deli meat a little bit. The pork chashu takes two days. It's cured overnight and then slow roasted. Then it's marinated again in its mother chashu sauce, kept since day one and recooked with each batch. And it's just a really, really nice amount of surface area to get at that flavor for you to feel and get that broth with every bite. It's tender. That is the perfect egg. 
Like pork trotters. Legs. <laughs>